Okay then, welcome to another um, basic um, animation tutorial. Um, in this lesson, we're going to move on to a different program that allows us to do a similar bouncing ball activity. So last lesson, you were able to, you know, uh, hopefully create a bouncing ball using tweening options. Um, now we're going to be using another program to do the same thing. So just a reminder, the simple process is you're making a bouncing ball, okay? And it's essentially, it's going to allow you to experiment with um, specifically position and scale of an object, scale or shape, whatever you'd like, however you'd like to call it, okay? So you will need to find um, Animate CC on your uh, computer. Once you've done that, um, you'll be greeted by a loading screen and then this area here. What I'd like you to do is just pick uh, Action Script 3.0 um, and then it's going to open up this simple area. Okay, it's similar to the other program you use. Let's have a quick look at the, the two. Um, so essentially, you've got um, material and things at the side, at the side here as well, different windows, but mainly you've got a timeline and you'll find this with all of the different programs. You have the timeline at the bottom. Okay, and you can see you've got frame rate and everything like that um, right there. Okay, and it's given as an indicator right at the bottom that this is at 24 frames per second, so bear that in mind. Okay, now the idea is um, that we are going to be creating single frames and then we are going to be animating something in um, those frames, okay, by drawing separate pictures or maybe copying and pasting uh, pictures um, into different frames. Um, if you so wish, okay? So anyway, let's get started. Now you've got a marker here, just like you did in After Effects as well, um, but the, the thing to take into account is you cannot actually go anywhere um, with this uh, marker at this point in time. Now, if we were to um, just quickly zoom in at this point in time, just have a look at this area here. You've got the marker, the red line here, but you've also got this single circle um, in this uh, beveled, sorry, embossed, um, air, in bevel, I think it's beveled area here. And it's different to any of these other little rectangles that make up these different frames, okay? That's because we've got a single frame here, okay? And the circle in the middle means it's an empty frame. Now, first of all, let's make mul a multitude of frames, okay? Let's take it to one second. I need you to right click. So on a Mac, this will be control click, and I would like you to click uh, insert frame. Okay, now we can see this a little bit better, and we can see that this is a circle. Okay, notice that we inserted a single frame. Okay, now this all this area is all one frame, even though it's actually taking up one second's worth of frames, so 24 frames. Okay, if I was to right click here. Command, control click and click insert frame you'll see that it simply adds another frame onto there okay what happens if I add a different one insert keyframe let's do that now what that's done now is that's actually broken up these areas okay and this gives me an opportunity to illustrate how this works okay so leave the marker here in this area and then let's just draw something. Now, you could draw a circle using the oval tool. Uh, but I like to, in this instance, actually just draw it using a, a brush tool. So I'm just gonna draw a simple circle. This is just a doodle, so it really doesn't matter. I mean, that should be, you know, better than that, shouldn't it? It should be more like that. But it doesn't matter either way. Control Z, Command Z. Okay. What you see down here is that that's actually changed now. Um, it's a different color and the circle has been filled in. This gives us an indicator that there is something that lives within that frame. Okay, if I was to get rid of it, it's gone. Let's bring it back. All right then. Oh, don't do that. Maybe if I did that. Okay. Either way, I'm making a complete mess of this at this point in time. Never mind, eh? Never mind. There's our ball. There's our crappy ball at this point in time. Okay, let's move on. Right, so um, you have a ball here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to change this whole thing up. I'm going to 
right click again once I've selected everything try that one more time right click and I'm going to click convert to blank keyframes now that's more of what we want to see at this point in time we want to be able to draw on each frame now I can go on to this frame and I can draw something else entirely at this point in time there's nothing in that frame so I draw something and then there is something in that frame that's how it works okay and you can also see kind of like a flip book works if you flip from one one frame to another one page to another you can see a little bit of motion you almost make the imagination yourself let's move on to the next one and then draw again there you go we've got some sort of movement forming there okay what I'd like you to do is try that out for yourself but before you do I'm just gonna make that a little bit easier for you now down here is something called the onion skin option we're gonna click that okay now look at the marker around the marker is a blue um, circle and a green circle that means in this area you are going to be able to see the original image in blue and anything in front of it as green so when I put my marker against the first frame I can accurately produce another ball using that as a guide if I did another one now the accuracy of my balls are um, what's the word to be desired but it's going to give us an interesting effect it's almost like the ball's coming towards us perhaps this time there you go that's essentially what that does now if we move into this you'll be able to see that's the current frame because that's the one that's actually the correct color everything else is either blue behind or green in front okay if I was to quickly play that back it's gonna be very quick yeah you see that there is movement there yeah now if we click on this this loop option that gives us a another indicator of what is going to be looping so just like we tried with uh, After Effects we move the work area this is essentially um, what it does in animate yeah so I can do from there to there it's going to play that back so I can kind of see uh, the general motion of that okay so that's essentially um, that technique okay um, that's as simple as it is at this point in time um, what I want you to do is I want you to try to create um, a bouncing ball that is similar to the one in the video okay yep. so what is there there's a line there is shadow um, and there is a ball one thing you might want to do is actually make separate layers so we can add a layer just at the bottom here pop that underneath that layer we can draw a simple line yep have that at the back there and actually lock it okay so you can't actually manipulate it in any way you know your mouse can't pick it up but your mouse can pick up that as we've uh, just seen you pick that up and you can move that okay so why don't we try just to make things easier for yourself because to be honest with you just looking at my drawing skills they're pretty bad um, using the mouse so maybe yours are better good for you if that's the case we're going to clear all the keyframes here oh, and we're going to convert that back into a keyframe Convert back the keyframes. there we go okay and what we're actually going to do we're going to select this the whole thing press command C we're going to move on to the next um, area I'm going to press command V and then we're going to move it up to the point in which we want it we're going to move the next one. Command V. We're going to keep going. Now, what I'm doing there is I'm moving it with the mouse, but I've got this annoying snap thing come up, that little circle. So, what I tend to do is just move it with the keyboard um, arrows as well, um, you know, the ones that are near the numerical keypad. 
So there, there's another way of actually doing it as well. You might find that it's a little bit more accurate. Okay, so you could potentially use this technique and create a circle using the ellipse tool. Okay, so that's another option. But either way, if you can, try to recreate this. And once you've done that, I'd like you to feedback, get some feedback from your tutor um, and some help essentially on you know uh, improving it. Okay, before we move on. Okay, so well done and uh, good luck.